Hello, women helping women. Happy, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. How are you today? How are you today? As you're hopping on, say hi. Give me some type of emoji. Write me a comment. Let me know that you are watching. I'm so excited to be here. I'm not sure what the week is, but I think this is like my fifth week live. So I'm super, super excited to be on here. And today, what I'm gonna be talking about, the topic that I wanna to discuss today is making self-love, making self-love the driving force behind your business. Making self-love the driving force. Why? Well, there's a lot going on, right? We, we try to seek the right answers for how we can grow our business, how we can run our groups, how we can be more efficient doing lives, how we can sell more, how we can get more clients, right? There's so much that we try to figure out. And I hope that after, I hope that by the time you finished watching me that you're gonna have a better understanding and a little more confidence in yourself to feel like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I run my business. What matters is how I feel about myself because my business is a reflection of me. My business is a reflection of me, okay? And I'm not seeing who's on here, so please give me a comment and let me know that you're here so I can say hi to you, especially if it's the first time you're ever viewing me too. So oftentimes what happens is that we start our business because there's something, there's something behind it that drove it, right? There's some type of trauma or maybe you had successful siblings or maybe you just have a dream. You have this dream that you want to fulfill. So everybody has, not everybody has the same reason for starting their business, right? But once we get on this journey based on, based on what kind of relationship you have with yourself, which is what self-love is all about, right? I always like to define self-love as an actionable, as a reflective, as an honest and an actionable relationship that we have with ourselves. So we have to have a relationship with ourselves. It's not about what we're doing, it's about the relationship that we have with ourselves. And based on what kind of relationship we have with ourselves, that is going to impact, that is going to impact our business. Hi, Linda. So glad you're tuning on. Hey, hey, hey. Right? So I want you to rate yourself. I want you to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, super simple. How much do you love yourself? How deeply do you love yourself? And let's start there. Let's start there. And let me tell you why I am talking about this. I coach women. I coach women. I help them heal and love themselves. But I also work with a lot of clients and I help them with their businesses, not specifically because that's what I wanted to do, but because that often became and often becomes a result of me working with a woman and helping her tap more into her power, helping her heal, helping her love herself. And in that process, she wakes up and she's like, Oh my gosh, I need to start my own business. I want to do my own thing. I'm believing in myself now. I want to do this for me, right? So that's been happening as a result. And in this journey, in this process as a coach, something I've been seeing a lot is that a lot of women try to figure out the how. The house of doing things. How can I do it? How can I do it? How can I do it? How can I do it like you? How can I do it this way? How can I do it this way? How can I do it? How can I do it? And that's the question. Those are the type of questions we're asking. Instead of asking, what way will work best for me? What needs to happen for me to show up energized, for me to show up as my true self on live? What needs to happen for me to attract my ideal clients? What needs to happen for me to really be able to feel confident when I'm speaking? when I'm expressing myself, when I'm educating, when I'm coaching, whatever it is that you're doing, right? We don't make it enough about ourselves because we're programmed and we, we, we are raised in such way, right? Most of us grew up in a performance-based household where we only got validation and recognition if we did something, if we achieved some type of results. So what happens and we're running our business and the process is taking its natural, its natural flow, right? But 
you're not seeing results maybe you're not having clients currently maybe you don't even have one client yet and you get super super frustrated and what do you do what do you do you get super super frustrated and you feel like the world is falling apart why well because to you results equal validation love appreciation right so when we're not producing the results when we're not seeing the results we do what? We get really mean to ourselves. Tawny said cry, yes. I hope I said your name right. Correct me otherwise. So when we're not seeing the results, what do we do? do we, wanna, we wanna spend our last money, buy this, buy that, figure out, oh my gosh, what other system do I need to bring into life? What kind of system do I need to use? Maybe I need to spend more money here. Maybe I need to more spend more money here. Maybe I need to do it exactly like she's doing it because she's making all the money. She's making all the millions. She has all these clients. So I really have to figure out what she's doing. And I'm, and I'm preaching, I'm not talking about how this business is just for me and I'm doing this for me and my family and it's not about comparison, it's not about other people. But every day, every day I'm looking at what everybody else is doing and I'm trying to figure out how I can do it their way. This is what I'm trying to figure out. Because I think that once I figure out how to do all these things, because it feels so overwhelming, because I feel like I'm constantly behind. Hi, Kelly. So glad that you're here. I think that once I figure out all the house that I'll be taken care of, not knowing that the question, how can I do something, is often very detrimental to our development, to our growth, and to our own self-discovery. Because running a business should be like an adventure. If I feel nervous, if I'm stuttering, if I'm not really attracting my soulmate clients, if maybe I'm just attracting a certain type of client, instead of looking at it as, why am I attracting this type of client? Why? Let's see. Okay, and if I'm not liking the type of clients I'm attracting, how about I look at myself, I look at my own life, and I look at, that to see where do I need to do more work? Where do I need more healing? What needs to happen within me? What, have, what do I have to unlock within me in order for me to attract the type of clients I wanna work with? I only have people, I only get people that are not paying on time, they only wanna do payment plans, they got all kinds of issues, they're not true to their word, or whatever it may be but our clients are a reflection of who we are. The type of customers that we attract are a reflection of what's going on within us. And those are the type of things, the internal things people don't wanna look at when it comes to business. We just wanna look at what can I do more? What can I add to my business so my business can grow? Not understanding that you and yourself are the most important factor. But you'll say, that's, that's too much work. That's too, that's too painful because it, if I'm not making the money, if I'm not having the type of clients that I want to have, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not getting a lot of engagement when I'm going live, if, I'm, if I don't have a very, uh, a lot of active people in my group, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not, if it's because of me, oh my gosh, now we have a serious issue, right? But if I make it about, oh, well, there's something else outside of me, outside of my business that I haven't added to the business, that once I add that, then it'll all be figured out. That's less painful. It's more painful to look within to see where is the block or where is the pain where am I struggling in my own life? Where am I not being true to myself? And what area of my life do I need to grow in? And what way can I care for myself more? And what ways can I give myself all the things that I'm wishing and hoping that other people will give me? I want to have all this money. I want to have all these clients. Why? 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 Why is that? 
we don't have internal conversations with ourselves enough when it comes to business. I've seen this so much. I've even had so many people come to me, even though I never promoted it. Hey, can you please help me with my business? I want to grow my business. And I said, okay. And then what happens? A few weeks in, sometimes one or two months in, the clients end up telling me that, hey, I, I, I think I've realized that I, I have a lot of healing work to do. I need to love myself more. And I understand now that I've been working myself so hard, excessively, and I've been trying to figure out all these things. Because why? I've been using my business as a distraction to run away from myself, to run away from my pain. And I've been trying to prove something to the world, to my parents, to my friends, to my exes, to all these people in my life that haven't really been there for me. And I've been driving so hard in my business, not realizing that I haven't set the right foundation. I've lost myself in the process. I don't even know why I'm doing what I'm doing anymore. I just keep adding, 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 adding. And I want more and more and more and more and more and more clients. I want more and more and more and more customers but I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm so obsessed with the numbers, why I'm so obsessed with the numbers. And I realize eventually that I've lost track. I've lost track of what's important. Each individual person, each client, each customer, each interaction. I don't care. I don't care if I get, I get less engagement because I talk about self-love, right? On these lives, when I come on here and women helping women, if I come on here and I talk about sales funnels, if I talk about groups, if I talk about Facebook lives, if I talk about the fact that I made $50,000 last month or whatever the case may be, now all the attraction comes because this is something external. And when it's something, something external, you get excited because you think you can just adapt it real quick and you'll be able to skyrocket your business. But when it's about something internal, hmm, it's a little more painful, right? But it's here, it's here that we start recognizing who we are. It's here when we do the inner work that we realize that we've been self-sabotaging a lot. It's here that we realize it's not so much about getting information everywhere, of course, we should always grow and educate ourselves, but we also have to be careful. Some people are obsessed with studying so many different people, and then they want to do like this person, like this person, like this person, like this person. Oh my gosh, and all of them have it together, but I still don't, and I don't know what to do anymore. Something I even did in the beginning. I was watching everybody else, and I thought I had to crack the code of how to run my business, and I thought I had to run my business a certain type of way. I thought that I had to run my business the way they were running their business. My husband and I hired a business coach our first year working as relationship coaches. Paid $8,000, $7,000, $8,000, I believe, $8,000 just to learn a system. A system that didn't work for us. A system that was based on, on a specific personality type, a system that was made for people who like to be on others, be really, uh, I don't want, yeah, a little pushy, a system that did not work for us. And I was like, oh my gosh, we just spent our last $8,000, never had an issue with investing in myself, but because I was not connected with myself, I invested in the wrong type of coach because I was looking at what he had. I was looking at his results. I was not looking at what kind of coach could actually help me lead myself in a better way. What kind of coach could actually help me unlock some things within myself? So the business would be a reflection of me and not that I would have to sell myself short just so I could do all these things. And it was very, very exhausting. And after that experience, I realized, hmm, it's not about what we do. It's about how we're feeling about ourselves. And it's about recognizing what ways work for us. And the more that we fall in love with ourselves, the easier everything gets. 
the easier everything gets. People start popping up out of nowhere. Like I have people that are in my group that I never talked to, they never clicked a like or a heart or anything on anything. And then one day they'll inbox me and say, hey, I wanna work with you. Hey, I wanna take one of your programs. Hey, I don't know how, but I know you're God sent and I know I manifested you into my life. How can we work together? Just randomly. But this, what I'm talking about, this doesn't just happen on the screen that, you know, I'm making sure that I'm confident and I'm interacting and doing whatever. No, what am I doing behind the screen? How am I feeling about myself behind the screen? What kind of work am I doing behind the screen? And if we're not just, if we're not doing that, or if we're doing it to the very minimum, and still not seeing results, and we continue to try to add outside stuff, yeah, you're gonna notice that there are only a few people that are really, really advancing, and those people don't have anything else in common other than that, yes, they have a very strong money mindset, of course, but they're doing the inner work, and they're showing up as them. That's it, they're showing up as them because People have made it in so many different ways. Some people without funnels, without anything, just strictly using Facebook groups. Other people run ads. Other people are out and, and are active more. But as soon as we start looking at what other people are doing, we, we shoot ourselves in the foot. And I'm speaking from experience because that's what I used to do. And in the process, I figured out a way that works for me. And that's me paying more attention to me, me paying more attention to what's going on internally, me not feeling frustrated with myself when I, when I feel yucky or when I feel sad when someone decides not to work with me. But instead, and if I do feel sad, I allow myself to be sad. But then I try to figure out, then I work on figuring out why I felt that way. Our relationship with ourselves determines the quality of our lives. And that includes also the quality of our business and how we're building our business, what kind of foundation we're building it on. Because you can make all the money in the world. And then once you get to the point where you're like, okay, I don't know, maybe this amount is good. If, if, if you don't have a healthy relationship with yourself, nothing is going to matter eventually. Nothing. And then what? then what's gonna happen? So why not start doing it right now? So then you can have the, an amazing relationship with yourself and you can have your clients, your customers, the money and everything else that comes along in the process. Let me check the comments. Linda said, I cry when I'm frustrated. I feel like I'm not liked. I, I'm not obsessed with money. I want to help others. Yes, yes. There's so many different factors too. Many times we want to justify why we want clients. We want to justify why we want money like desires are bad. Desires are there for us to really fulfill our missions, our, our dreams, whatever we have in our lives. That's, desire is amazing because if we didn't have desire, if we didn't have desires, we would all die because we wouldn't have any type of any type of driving force behind doing anything. We would be lazy, we would not do anything. So desire is not a bad thing, but we need to look at where we're struggling with ourselves and then we have to look at our business to see, oh, okay, that makes sense. I don't feel comfortable going live and looking into camera and speaking to people because I was always told that I was dumb. I was told that I wouldn't amount to anything. I was told to shut up when I spoke up in my, in my family. My dad told me that I, I'm not as good as the next person. This is something I was told a lot. I hated speaking on stage. I would rather be sick than going to school and, do, uh, and, and, and doing a presentation. But then when I started changing the relationship with myself, the way I feel within myself and about myself, my husband to start taking me into jail facilities. We go to prisons, we go to halfway houses. We go to boys and girls group homes. I've spoken to, I've spoken at grief, grief events. We speak in schools about bullying and self love. We're helping so many couples. And now I love speaking. 
because I had to find my myself first. I wanted to speak on stage before. I wanted to feel confident on these live sessions, but I couldn't. People could tell me whatever they wanted to tell me all day, every day, but at the end of the day, the person that is looking at you can sense. The person that is looking at you can sense and feel how you really feel about yourself and whether or not you're scripted or whatever the case may be people can sense that and that's what a lot of people are afraid of you know I, I can have the script right here right but I'm still worried because I know the people are gonna see right through me and that's scary because we're scared we're afraid and we're worried we don't want to be we don't want other people to judge us we don't want people to look right through us there is a lot that is going on in every situation when it comes to the groups, when it comes to the emails, when it comes to the live sessions, when it comes to the consultations, when, it's, when it comes to the sessions. There's so many different factors that are involved in each category. We can get the script. We can figure out a way to do it. But who is behind it? Who is doing it? And how is she feeling about herself? And is she believing in herself? Is she doing the work that she's sharing? With her clients is she real right jamie said it's sobering it's a sobering realization when you feel like a stranger to yourself absolutely the only person we have an inside scoop on and we don't even understand that person me right right absolutely but that's painful it's easier to just go and hire someone to, to teach us a new strategy or give us a new system to apply to our business or ask the next person, oh, how are you so confident? How do you do it? It's never about the how, it's about what we can do and why things are turning the way they're turning or why we're doing what we're doing and always making it about the what. And the how never comes until the very end, right? Once we've done all kinds of stuff, we're like, ah, oh, that's how I did it. <laughs> so why worry about the how? Why worry about that? Linda said, I'm not trying to be like anyone. That's awesome. That's awesome. And many people, many people don't want to be like others. But when we lose that connection from ourselves, when we disconnect from ourselves so much, and we start looking at what everybody else is doing because we try to figure out a way how we can make more clients or make more money. We don't realize that many times we do lose that connection with ourselves. So our results in our business is often a reflection of what's going on internally. But it's also often a result of you being on that path you being on that journey and you're just growing. But again, based on how you're feeling about yourself, that's going to determine how you get through that and what you do with that. Jamie said, the more we accept ourselves, we can move on to a greater future. Yes, absolutely. That's beautiful. Linda said self-development. Kelly said, that's true. Jamie said, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Hi, Jody. So glad you tuned in. Linda says, that's awesome. The work you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So is there anything that kind of came to mind uh, as I've been talking? What is going through your head right now? Would you say that you do have some inner work to do? Would you say that you do have some healing work to do? Would you say that, yes, I could love myself a little more? Would you say that, yes, if I love myself a little more, I would probably have more clients. If I love myself a little more, I would probably do a few more lives. If I loved myself a little more, I would really trust my intuition and let myself write freely without thinking how the heck I need to structure my post. If you loved yourself more, what would happen? What would it look like if you loved yourself more? What could happen to your business? What could happen? Sylvia said, yes, love that, absolutely. Now the question is what needs to happen what needs to happen for you to love yourself more? For you to love yourself more? What needs to happen? What, what, what could be your next step? Or what do you have to stop doing? 
All right, what do you have to stop doing? Because many times we do too much. And because we do too much, we disconnect from who we truly are. Jamie said, I think the more we accept ourselves, the more the people we are helping feel comfortable with themselves. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. It's so beautiful. So Self-acceptance is definitely key. That's definitely where we need to start. Linda said, yes, I could, and I'm working on it. That's all that matters. That's beautiful. It's so awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hi, Tanya. How are you? So excited. I only have five minutes left here, so you'll probably have to catch the replay if you want to see the whole live. Jamie says, stop second guessing our instincts. Yes. And that's something that can get confusing because we have so much information around us, right? We have so many people around us doing things and they're so successful and so much is going on and we just try to figure out so much <laughs> that we don't even realize we're disconnected. And once we realize that and we realign with who we truly are, now when we're just relaxing, when we're watching Netflix, when we're cooking, when we're dancing, we're having fun, we start getting those messages. We don't know how they're gonna come. Everybody's been telling me, oh, you can't make any money or get any clients off of TikTok. I have people messaging me there all the time. I get constant clients from TikTok and, and I sell so many of my journals on there. I have a self-love healing journal because I'm doing TikTok completely differently. I'm not going on there to dance. I just go on there and I talk about self-love. I don't care what other people use the platform for. I'm gonna use it the way I wanna use it. So we don't have to do it the, the way other people are doing it. We don't. And on Monday, on Monday I am doing a two hour self-love training. I'm really gonna dive hardcore into my own life and what happened in order for me to wake up and realize I had to love myself. I'm gonna be sharing some of my struggles. I'm gonna be sharing my best self-love tips. I'm gonna be talking about what I'm doing, what I'm not doing every day. I'm gonna be talking about how to love yourself through, through difficult times when you don't feel like you wanna love yourself. How to love yourself when no one else is supporting you. I'm gonna be talking about how you can use self-love, how you can use self-love as the foundation to attract whatever you want. Because once I started loving myself, I not only opened my business, but also attracted my husband and we got married after 55 days. It's been a beautiful journey, but nothing happened until I shifted internally. So I do have that self-love training on Monday. If you wanna join, it's two hours long and you get to keep it forever. So it's gonna be live and then you get to keep it forever. And it's $77. I've never done that type of training before. I only usually, I usually just run programs and courses. And I do have a self-love course coming up too, August 17th which is called Soulful Self-Love. It's seven days, it's super intense. I'm teaching every day. So I'm talking about self-acceptance. I'm talking about self-worth. I'm talking about um, um, uh, with little, uh, boundaries. I'm talking about so much. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like this self-love is the tree and we have so many different branches coming off of it. And I'm diving into each branch, each branch of self-love and it gets to be intense. I'm talking about how to rewire our, our brain. I'm talking about how to become more conscious and how to really, really connect with yourself and your own magic. So if you want to do that, that's August 17th. If you want to do the two-hour training, it's on Monday. And if you, if you don't want to do any of that and you just want me more for you for free, join my group, Self Carved but I do, do have those two offers. And I also have a self-love healing journal if you're wanting to do some journaling as well. Let me just check the comments. Uh, Gemma said, I actually fired two clients today because they were very disrespectful to me over the years. Gemma, that is huge and setting boundaries is huge when it comes to, it's so important, it's so important. And we don't realize, sometimes we get afraid because we're like, oh my gosh, that's money but we clear up space for our soul clients to, st to step in, right? And when they step in, it may be more, it may be less, but it's often more fun, right? And we end up making more money when we stop being afraid. Because you're always, you're always taken care of, right? Sylvia said, being afraid that clients won't pay what I believe the value of my services. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we can never charge our worth. People say charge your worth, but you, you don't, there is no worth. There is no dollar amount that you can put on your worth, right? So we really have to also make sure that whatever we charge, we believe that we're worth it. 
because if we believe it, other people are gonna believe it too. Tanya said, do more for me. I love that. Uh, Sakia said, I've been saying this to my man, so we're working on more action instead of just talking about it. I love that, I love that, I love that. That's amazing, that's beautiful. Tanya said, amen. I said, that's awesome. Jamie said, self-care is super important. Absolutely. Linda said, wow, that's awesome. You and your husband are a beautiful couple. Thank you so much. Ladies, my time is running out, but I will be back next Saturday. If you want to join my group, make sure to join my group. If you want to do my training on Monday, the two-hour training, I put the link so you can sign up. And if you want to register for my upcoming program, Soulful Self Love, it starts August 17th. It's right around the corner too. You have the link for that. Also, inbox me if you have any questions or if you want to chat about one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, ladies, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.